Thank you. This is a very debated uh, topic. Let's move on. I started to, to try retinal transplantation after hearing uh, this talk. Dr. Tamer Mahmoud tried the first autologous retinal transplantation on a chronic high myopic macular hole and he reported a good anatomical but also good functional result. That's why I was intrigued to try. We were all astonished about hearing the results. So this is my first case, chronic hole already operated, no ILM left, count fingers. Uh, following uh, Dr. Tamer Mahmoud's suggestion, uh, the technique consisted in uh, creating a um, shallow retinal detachment, isolating a small flap of retina, and transplanting, transporting the flap of retina into the uh, macular hole. I tried under PFCL, and during the PFCL silicon oil exchange, I had difficulties in maintaining the flap in position. So finally, I decided to leave PFCL inside the eye for one week. So. The first impression was difficult to manage. I did diatomy at the edges of the flap, but probably it was not a good idea because I damaged the edges that had to be transplanted. And I did not do enough diatomy at the harvesting site, and I ended up with mild vitreous hemorrhage afterwards. This is how the patch uh, looks uh, under PFCL. The, uh, the best thing was to look at the OCT. The flaps really looks integrated into the hole. But after a while, um, I observed um, uh, a change into the anatomy that I interpreted as a turning into atrophy. Doing microperimetry, the patient was looking at the edge of the flap and not on top of the flap, and I consider this a failure. Uh, I try with a second case, uh, basically same technique. I will move forward just for sake of time. Uh, and uh, in this case as well, I have not seen a good anatomical integration and no recovery in vision. But I tried again with uh, different patients. You can, um, okay, let me show you the best one. You can see a very good integration into the macular hole. Uh, I would like to show you. Can you see inside the patch of retina into the hole? I don't know if I can use this. Yes, as pointer. This is the patch of retina. And this was the only patient that I operated that started to show an improvement in central fixation. So I operated five cases, and uh, I'm still very concerned uh, I have uh, not as good results as my colleagues are reporting around the world. Uh, although um, all of them were plurioperated and probably either mistakes in my technique or uh, too severe, um, uh, let's say, primary situation to, to start with uh, prevented a good recovery. I think, uh, you know, we have an open uh, clinical study ongoing and so more needs to be stated. Uh, as you know, I have experiences in a choroidal transplantation for exudative maculopathy, but I propose that only if the retina, external retina, is not atrophic, otherwise it doesn't work. So I wanted to apply the choroidal transplantation and retinal transplantation simultaneously to cases that I would not operate with choroidal transplantation itself. So this is a case that is not indicated. If you do only choroidal transplantation, you will not obtain anything because the retina itself is atrophic. I tried the simultaneous uh, transplantation of the patch of choroid and the patch of retina um, harvested from the very periphery. Uh, let me tell you, I didn't know how to do it. So I started by placing a patch of retina on top of the patch of choroid. <laughs> it is described that you can obtain uh, an extra foveal, uh, new connections. That's why I decided to do that. And uh, it is also described that in the periphery, you can have multipotent cells that can transform into photoreceptors from the retina. Look at the images. This is pre-op. This is one week post-op. The retina looks actually extremely good compared to the preoperative 
uh, OCT. This is the transplanted retina, like in a sandwich fashion, and this is the patch of choroid. It looks good anatomically, but the patient did not show any improvement in vision, and this is after eight months. So anatomy stays there, but I had no improvement in vision and central fixation. Uh, I did uh, a few more cases. Um, here I changed the technique. As you can see, this patient had an atrophic retina and also uh, almost a macular hole that turned into a full thickness macular hole when I induced uh, the retinal detachment. So in this case, I decided to place the um, transplant of retina into the macular hole. So you see that uh, I perform the choroidal transplant in the usual way, and then I, uh, inject, I insert the, mm, the, the flap of retina, harvest it from uh, the mid-periphery into the macular hole. I don't want to touch the video because I don't want to start again, but this is uh, worth looking at because it's different technique. So I harvested the full thickness patch of retina and I inserted it into the macular hole. I can tell you that this, the technique is difficult. It's difficult. I consider this difficult because it's easy to lose the flap. It's easy to have bleeding. Um, okay, it will be moved fo forward into the macular hole and uh, PFCL is exchanged with, uh, with silicon oil. So let's look at how it looks afterward. This is the patch of choroid, and this is the patch of retina. One more case, very similar. This is the patch of choroid. This is the patch of retina. Anatomy always looks very good. And in this case, this was the first case that actually showed also a central fixation, a more central fixation, and the patient is reporting an improvement in vision. So. In summary, uh, I operated six cases. Again, I'm very uh, suspicious, concerned. I'm observing what will happen in the longer um, follow-up. Uh, I think there's something, and it's worthwhile to move on. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> but... Uh, so, uh, what's the difference between uh, the, the patient we walk and so the, uh, the patient doesn't walk? who had the central visions. Mm? Is there any difference in the technique? Well, nobody knows how to do it. Nobody knows <laughs> if it makes sense to do it. These patients, of course, agree to do it because, as you understand, they are patients without other resources and options. We don't know which is the best uh, technique. I really need more time to judge. But uh, as I have seen an improvement in vision in the last patient, I think it's worthwhile to move on. Okay. okay. Please. No. Graph, the challenge is connecting the neurons, yes. basically axons and dendrites, they need to mm -hmm. connect in between the patch and the, uh, the native retina. And that's a big challenge. That's a, that's something that we still don't understand, the current science doesn't understand. Yes, I think we were all astonished in seeing at least the anatomical integration that we see at the OCT. That's why I thought it was worthwhile to move on. I don't think we have time for... Just or? one thing, have you done any OCTA on these patients? I have. It's very difficult to see, I, I couldn't add images. It's difficult to recognize the vascularization. I just talked to Carl Glittenberg about that and I hope to show you good pictures next time. 